Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for uh, inviting this, uh, this talk, I mean, from LHC, in this, of course, uh, Holier de, of theoretical physics, right? So anyway, I will try to give you an impression of, uh, of the supersymmetric searches at the LHC and uh, also uh, the search for dark matter candidates, which is also one of the very important tasks that the LHC is trying to fulfill. So uh, first of all, uh, as Massimo already said, um, so the LHC has resumed, uh, let me tell you some words about the, the status of the LHC. So the LHC has resumed the operation at 13 TV. The run two is ongoing right now. Since June 3rd, 2015, uh, we have stable collisions and uh, physics uh, data are being collected by the LHC experiments, including CMS now with the, with the magnetic field on, so this is great. Um, so uh, the results that I will present from RAN1 uh, at 7ATV are practically all final, so this is the heritage of, of the uh, Susie, search, Susie and Dark Matter searches at the LEC for RAN1, mostly. Uh, they are mostly published whenever possible. In fact, almost always I will give the, re uh, the references to the results. And uh, so in this talk, I will review uh, in, in a broad way, because I cannot go in many details. Uh, as you see, there are many, many results uh, for, for Susie and Dark Matter uh, searches. And uh, I will give an overview of the expectation for run two. So here is just a nice picture of two events taken by CMS and Atlas. So there is, of course, uh, the, the LHC uh, screen saying that the, the, the two beams are on, and so everybody's happy, as you can see. OK, now, what about the status of the standard model after the X discovery? Of course, the X discovery, we've seen this very nice talk from Massimo. It has shown that, really, we understand a lot about even about the X. We can measure it with high precision. Nevertheless, it's a cornerstone, of course, of standard model. So we have, co we have completed the standard model. Nevertheless, there are many questions which are open. I don't need to, to tell this to you. But uh, it's clear that uh, even the standard model asks uh, and uh, demand the new physics uh, beyond, beyond the standard model. And as uh, Isidore Rabi said about uh, the muon, who ordered that? You can say the same thing about the standard model. Who has ordered it? this structure of this hierarchy of masses, and so on and so forth. And so the next uh, thing is the status of the universe after Planck. We have seen this very nice talk uh, on Tuesday and, uh, uh, by um, uh, Professor Dunkley. And as you have seen, uh, she has shown that really we understand a lot about the, the large scale structure of the universe. And in fact, we even know uh, what the universe is composed of, ordinary matters, 5%, 27% dark matter, and uh, the rest is, uh, is dark energy, which is, uh, of course, a very mysterious uh, substance which we need to understand. So uh, we can say at the best we understand the 5% of the universe, while well, the standard model with all the questions which are still open, although of course now we understand also very well the X, but still many questions are open. And then uh, the rest is mysterious stuff which uh, certainly ask, demand new physics, okay? So, uh, so is then the next question as an experimentalist and even I'm just a physicist, you can ask yourself, is this new physics within reach at the LHC? So uh, as experimentalists, we know that the reach of an accelerator or a collider is depending on the center of mass energy, obvious, because that gives you the possibility to, to create this particle in the collisions. And then the luminosity, you need enough luminosity because if the cross-sections are small, of course, uh, you have uh, uh, enough events also to apply cuts and then discriminate from background, okay? So uh, as we will see in the next plot, uh, we, we know that the reach of the, the LHC at uh, 13, 14 TV is of the order of five, 4, 5 TV. So we, are, we will explore this uh, scale, this energy scale or this mass uh, mass scale at the LHC around two and beyond. 
So is this then, is then the new physics which could explain uh, some or all of the questions standard model and beyond the dark matter and maybe even the, uh, you know, uh, residing in this, in this uh, mass range? Of course, this is a question you cannot answer. I mean, but we have indication, we have seen uh, throughout uh, all uh, many talks which have been given here, we have indication that there is probably something going on in this, in this, in this mass range or is the energy range. So uh, we hope uh, to see something. Uh, as you know, supersymmetry provides uh, motivation for uh, new physics uh, at the TV scale. There are, of course, other models that provide motivation. I will not uh, review it this year. And dark matter provides uh, very strong, uh, I would say, motivation for new particles below and at the TV scale. So all this is pointing to the fact that maybe something is really going on there. So uh, supersymmetry and dark matter are, are of course, uh, one of the main objectives of, of uh, the RAN2 LHC and beyond. OK, so just to uh, substantiate a little bit what I said before, here there is a plot which you can, uh, which you can uh, get uh, from, from this website. So it's an applet which has been developed by Gavin Salam and uh, Andreas Weiler, and it, it, it's a very nice thing, so at least for other experimenters who don't understand much, is it tells you uh, how the, the, you know, how going from, the, uh, from ATV to uh, 13 TV, ATV and the 20 inverse femtoban, which is what we collected in RAN1, going to uh, 13 TV and under inverse femtoban, which is what you hope to collect by the end of RAN2, how much does the mass, uh, the mass reach increase? So for example, if you take here 3 TV, uh, uh, RAN1 goes up to about uh, 5 TV in terms of mass reach at, uh, at run two. So this gives, of course, the, the things then depend on the real dynamics and the real, uh, uh, the real details of the theory, but you know, that gives you an idea how much uh, uh, things will increase, how much more you can explore. Okay, so uh, the next question is, is new physics equal supersymmetry? So of course, this we, we don't know, but uh, if you are a supersymmetry Susie believer, I think you know that uh, Susie has very nice features. I mean, uh, is uh, of course, was basically invented to stabilize the gauge hierarchy, to provide dark matter candidates, and uh, eventually also to provide the unification of, of the, the forces so the, within the standard model, and, I mean, the forces of the standard model, and, uh, and also gravity. So if you are a SUSE skeptic, uh, and uh, OK, you, you may certainly be, you, you must well recognize that uh, supersymmetry, um, even if maybe is, is not what, what we believe or it doesn't exist, is still uh, a very flexible theory that uh, gives, that encompasses a large variety of, of new phenomena. Uh, including the extended X sector, including missing energy signatures, but also, as you will see, long-lived and metastable particles, and uh, really very large, uh, large set and spectrum of uh, signatures of new physics. So that searching for SUSY, for SUSY signatures, whatever is suggested by SUSY, by the many, uh, many possibilities, uh, many models, as uh, suggest, may reveal other forms of new physics. So I, even as an experiment, you say, OK, maybe I don't believe in SUSY, but still, this gives me some guidance in looking for, for new physics. So new physics could emerge from, from uh, uh, searching for supersymmetry. OK, this is just uh, the apology of, of supersymmetry here. So now let's go to the experimental results. OK, so first of all, uh, let's look at the expected SUSY cross-section uh, for uh, ATV. So there are two things I want to uh, notice here. First of all, that the squark, uh, sorry, the gluinos at the largest cross-section followed by squarks, then uh, by third generation uh, quarks, 
and then by the electroweak genus, okay? So uh, also you can see that uh, cross-section are said to be high. I mean, often the theory say that SUSE cross-section are high. Yes, they're high. But for example, 1,000 TV, and so, uh, sorry, 1,000 GV are, are order of uh, 10 to the minus 2, uh, um, 10 to the minus 2 uh, picobar. So this you can compare, for example, this, this plot of oscillation by maximum to the standard model measure cross-section and also to the X cross-section, right? Uh, so this is 30 picobar, okay? So we are comparing, so we just put things in a framework, this cross-section, so this cross-section high, but in the end they are not so high, so there is, uh, they need a lot of luminosity, they need a lot of, uh, and they are competing with uh, these kind of backgrounds, okay? So there is a need for uh, quite an amount of luminosity also to do, to do SUSE searches. Okay. So uh, just to, to give you an overview of the searches that have been done at the RAN1, so both Atlas and CMS have searched for uh, Gluino and first and second generation squarks. So third generation squarks, stop as bottom, electroweak uh, uh, Gaginos, and other SUSE beyond the MSSM. So with a party violation, long live particle searches, and beyond MSM, MSSM signature in a large variety of final state and many different techniques, which I'll try to give you a flavor of because it's really huge amount of, of uh, searches that have been taken place. Okay, so this is uh, just a synoptic table of the number of, of uh, actually these are all papers which are now being published uh, with, uh, related to the SUSE search at LHC in uh, RAN1, this is by Atlas, and uh, the same thing is by CMS. So there are, I will, I, I given uh, the, the slides, so you can, uh, you can look at these, uh, at the references. Also the references are found in this, in the web pages of the, the experiments. So uh, you can just have an idea that there are really a huge amount of, uh, of, uh, of work done and, um, and a lot of varied uh, searches, okay? So uh, this, uh, okay, so to continue this discussion, uh, what we can say is that uh, supersymmetry can manifest itself in, broadly speaking, in two uh, classes of events with uh, I missing energy, missing transverse energy, which is uh, somewhat a canonical way of looking for supersymmetry uh, due to the fact that there are, uh, in the cascading case in the end, that there are particles, invisible particles in neutralino typically or others that don't, uh, uh, that are not detected, so they leave uh, transverse missing energy in the, detect, uh, in, in the event. And then there are, uh, there are uh, signatures beyond the MSSM, for example, which are without, uh, without missing energy, okay? But they are still within some uh, SUSE framework, which I will try to give you a flavor of. So um, I will now say something about uh, the, the experimental searches, I mean, how the searches are done, and then uh, uh, go on and show mainly results because I don't, uh, I don't have a whole lot of time. So, um, First of all, missing energy, okay? So as you can see uh, here in this uh, plot from, uh, from Atlas, okay? That's a search for gluinos in Atlas in a very recent uh, paper um, that shows uh, the missing energy, how it's measured, okay? For background, uh, for, I mean, for standard model processes. You can see over different order of magnitudes and the region where you expect uh, the, the SUSE to show up, so high missing energy. So the trick here is to have a very high control, very good control of the missing energy tails, of course, which uh, both the experiment, Atlas and CMS uh, have, and you can see this through uh, the fact that there is a very good agreement throughout different order of magnitudes uh, in the missing energy variable. 
So that's uh, one of the typical searches that you can do. Just uh, you do a selection of events, and then you apply emitting energy cuts. And typically, you can get sensitivity, for example, to the most abundantly produced uh, SUSI particles uh, that are gluinons. Uh, another variable which is a bit more complex, uh, but not so much after all because you can write it into formula, uh, is the razor variable, uh, which is uh, a variable that takes into account the topology of these events. There are typically two heavy particles decaying and producing, among other things, missing transverse energy. So what you try to do is to try to use uh, the full uh, event information as much as you can of the kinematic uh, variables that you measure in the event. So the momenta or the momentum of the jet or the, or the physics object are reconstructed into two, uh, let's say, mega jet. So you have an event which is kind of summed up into, into big jets for which you have uh, the, okay, you have all the kinematic variables, so you can reconstruct this, this mass, I mean, the mass of the object, and the, ma the presumed mass of the object and transverse mass of the object. And you can form this R variable, which is the ratio of the two, and then you can plot R square versus M, M uh, versus this ma mass razor mass. And you can see that for the standard model, the data are uh, sort of accumulating in this, in this corner, while for uh, supersymmetry particles, here is the gauge of 1,300 GeV, uh, the, the signal is more uh, much displaced. So this is one of those variables which helps you to discriminate effectively uh, in the supersymmetry searches. Um, so the search, first of all, the search for strong SUSI production. So this includes uh, various, uh, various uh, decay, various cascade decays that I don't list here. So this is uh, from, uh, from this paper from CMS. And uh, so I try to show you now some, uh, some results. Um, these are uh, all the most recent results, and everywhere you can find uh, the references. So this is a combination of several, but many searches, as you can see here. Um, overall, the, what it is is, is uh, the interpretation of the SUSI, Gluino, and Squirt searches in the framework of uh, so-called the constraint SUSI model, uh, CMSSM, and MSUGRA. And this is the mass M0, ver sorry, it's M1 alpha versus M0, the mass so-called universal Gagino and universal uh, squark mass, the, uh, uh, in which, I, I mean, within this model, one rep represents the results, but they can be translated also in, uh, in, ma in limits on the physical particle mass. So here, for example, you can uh, uh, derive from this plot a gluino, a, yes, a squark mass uh, limit of 1.6 TV about, and the gluino mass of 1.4 TV. So these are strong, these are strong limits, but they are within the uh, constrained uh, MSSM uh, uh, framework. So uh, yes. Um, so uh, the CMS, so this was Atlas. Atlas and CMS do similar things. So CMS has also another approach, which is, uh, uh, so they do the same search as Atlas, but the interpretation is done also in so-called simplified models. So these simplified models, you don't take into account all the relations between masses and branching ratios calculated according to the parameters of the model, which typically are many which you can reduce like constraint model, but they're still made. So what you do instead, you try to uh, select uh, masses and branching ratio which are uh, justified uh, from, I mean, from what we know, for example, from naturalness, but uh, they are not related specifically to a model. So it's a little bit, they say more model independent, it's not really more model independent, it's just that you uh, you, you use a different approach. You, you use uh, some specific mass hierarchy and so on. And anyway, at the end of the day, you can uh, derive, um, derive these kind of plots. So you measure 
cross-section limits for a cross-section of time zone changeation limit for each uh, mass uh, combination and you can uh, within certain assumptions of the model you can derive this kind of uh, excluded uh, regions okay so uh, and these are uh, as you can see uh, limits uh, are a bit lower softer than in the case of constraint models okay but uh, they're still quite uh, significant in the 1 TV region. For, okay, for uh, neutralino masses uh, that uh, go from 200 to 400 GV, practically, you have uh, almost uh, closed the region. But then as you go up in neutralino masses, uh, these, uh, these limits uh, soften up, okay? So, okay, that gives an idea that, uh, okay, there are uh, still... Uh, regions that, of course, uh, need to be explored and they are left unexplored by, by the LUC uh, RAN1. So, um, so now, uh, what did we get from LUC RAN1? That there is, that uh, it seems, that first and second generation uh, spermions, squarks in particular, are, appear to be heavy, otherwise we would have seen them, we didn't see them, so, so is this excluding supersymmetry? I think we cannot say that yet. Uh, and in fact, uh, theories have come up uh, after these results, negative results, have come up with the idea that of the natural supersymmetry, which says, okay, the spark can be heavy, so that's why you didn't see them, because uh, maybe they are even beyond the reach of the, uh, of the LUC at ATV or so, but uh, the uh, third generation quarks, squarks, like stop and bottom, can be lighter, and uh, remind you that um, the stop, of course, plays a very important role in the stabilization of the mass. It's one of the, you know, the reasons also for uh, having uh, supersymmetry eventually. And uh, so you, you, what you get is a spectrum where the squark are uh, large, but uh, the stop and bottom are relatively light, as well as the xeno, okay? Now, the stop and bottom line is a good news. The Xeno is a little bit less a good news because it's very difficult to see at the LHC. And, uh, okay, it appears that uh, this seems to be not a very good uh, dark matter candidate. But, okay, I mean, this is one model, okay? This is one model, well motivated, that people have explored, but, uh, okay, uh, maybe other models are possible, too, and other dark matter candidates are possible, as you... We'll see. So I go on on the stop, uh, on the stop, uh, stop search. Okay. So the stop decays typically into a, if, a, if, it, if the mass is big enough into top and uh, okay, top and decays according to standard model branching ratio and a neutralino. So in all cases you have uh, two top and missing energy, and in the where the, the top decay. The, re, the re, decay in a real top is not allowed. You have decay in a virtual top and even a decay in a C plus uh, then uh, neutralino. So these are uh, somewhat different regions, uh, ki different kinematic regions that requires uh, dedicated searches, okay? And I show here the results um, uh, from, from CMS. Okay, so uh, here you can see that there are uh, different uh, dedicated searches that have been uh, put in place. Okay, they have a certain reach uh, for a mass of the stop up to 700, 700 something GV. Uh, for masses of the neutralino up to, uh, let's say the, the, the region is closed for mass of the neutralino up to 200 GV, and above 200 GV, when the neutralino becomes heavier, of course, this exclusion dies a little bit up. Also, you can see here uh, the mass, uh, the, the exclusion uh, for uh, in this kinematic region where the, the, um, the stop cannot go in a real top, and here where the stop goes into a sick work and missing energy. So these are all uh, dedicated searches, but you see that there are clearly holes uh, opening up in these regions, uh, also that are not covered by present, uh, uh, present searches. So, so this, uh, this uh, one shouldn't take it lightly, and in fact, people take it very seriously. And uh, they do, uh, so here is the same, uh, sorry, is the same plot for, uh, for, for Atlas, okay? 
And uh, so you can see the same, a little bit, the same features, uh, uncovered regions. And the people take very seriously, and in fact, they try to do dedicated search. For example, this is a search for, uh, for body stop decays, okay? So where the, um, okay, the, the graph, I mean, the graph, the process that you're looking for is, is this one. So you look for, uh, for low energy, uh, for, uh, so, so you, you require an ISR jet, so to tag the event, and uh, soft leptons and jets plus missing energy, okay? And this, uh, I mean, this search is suppo supposed to cover up this band, uh, this kinematic band, uh, which is not covered by the conventional uh, searches. And as you can see, indeed, there is uh, uh, quite some sensitivity in the search. So this is one of the examples of, uh, you know, doing alternative search to cover up the holes or the gaps in the, in the parameter space. Um, another search is, uh, well, this actually precision measurement, which then is interpreted as a, a, a search, is in the region where the, top, the stop mass is very close to the top mass, which we have seen is not covered by conventional searches. So what you can do is to measure the spin correlation in TT bar events. And in the case of the stop, the spin correlation are expected to be different. Uh, from uh, the, the standard, standard top. And from the difference, you can uh, sort of set either you see a signal, so you see a deviation from the expected uh, spin correlation in the standard model for top events, or else if you don't see a signal within the uncertainty, you can set a limit uh, on uh, the contribution of stop events to your, your sample. And this uh, allows, uh, do, so this allows to put a uh, limit on the stop, on the light stop up to 191 GV. So these are ideas to say we are trying to cover all possible holes. Okay, so now I go to another uh, search. So it's bottom is also a third uh, generation squark. Okay, so uh, here is, um, this is the kind of process we are trying to look at. So event with jets, leptons, and missing energy. So the leptons are the key here. One tries to measure, I mean, after a certain number of, of cuts, a certain selection, which includes leptons and missing energy, one tries to, one measures the, the invariant mass of the two leptons. So these are the same flavor, E, E, mu, mu opposite sign leptons, okay? And uh, what you expect to see in this kind of, uh, this process, cascade decay process, is a spectrum which is a broad distribution with, a, with an edge. In fact, it is also called the edge search, okay? So uh, basically what you expect to see if there is a signal is a little bit of an excess in this region, in the low mass region, okay? So, uh, so this is, I think, CMS has done the search. So what they see, in fact, is a very good agreement in all control region, control sample, except that at the end of the day, when they do the mass plot, there is a 2.6, we call it for the moment, upward, upward fluctuation in this mass region, between 20 and 70 GV. Okay, uh, a similar analysis is done for uh, another topology, also for bottom search. And uh, again, also, uh, here you expect a little bit of, sorry, a little bit of an excess in the, in the low mass regions. And there, in fact, you see like a 2.4 uh, sigma excess. So these are very small excesses. Nobody's claiming anything, but there are probably things one should watch for. So the next thing you do is to ask your sister or brother experiment to look in the same region, which is when you see some kind of uh, in excess, which is exactly what Atlas has done. So they've done a similar, they've done, I mean, for they, they were doing a search for gluinos, okay, which has a similar final state. So they also look for, uh, for jets, uh, for soft jets, leptons, and missing energy. So they done the plot for a very similar uh, selection. So here is the, the signal that we are looking for, the edge signal I was talking about. 
is very nice picture in this plot. So, uh, and they, the, 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 the net result is I don't see no, no effect, uh, no excess. So, okay, we stay with this, but on the other hand, they have done another search in the dilepton channel, okay, also for gluinos with the um, gravitinos at the end, also a massless particle that, that carries the missing energy. And uh, so they select uh, events with the on shell Z, okay, so the, the plasma mason, the plasma is reconstructed. Uh, uh, is, is, is coming from the decay of a Z. And uh, so after the, um, you know, after full event selections, basically what you expect is from standard model is these, uh, these distributions here. And this is what you expect from, a, from the signal and these are the data, okay? So this is an effect at the three sigma level and uh, is published, uh, so it's in the public domain. Um, but uh, vice versa, CMS does not see uh, this excess yet. So anyway, this is interesting stuff we can look at. Okay, then I go on on the electroweak uh, SUSI production. So why is it important to, to look for uh, light, uh, so, sorry, for electroweak gay genus? Because as uh, within these natural uh, models, uh, they could be light, so we certainly need to look at them. You can see that there have been a lot of searches being done, and they show you now the results. Okay, so these are the latest uh, exclusion region in the, for, uh, for uh, leptons and, uh, and neutralinos. So there are, uh, you can see that the masses are excluded up to order of uh, uh, 700 GV, depending on what assumptions you do, okay? You have, as usual, the regions, uh, kinematic region close to the, the kinematic limit that are not covered, so these are taken seriously. People are trying to cover them up. So we have to look really everywhere, but for the moment, that's the results we have. With the new data, we will certainly uh, do more. Okay, and then I go here a little bit uh, quick on the SUSI beyond the MSSM, which induces uh, no missing, um, missing transverse energy signatures. So these are, uh, you know, very, very large number of models, same as B, GMSB, split supersymmetry, and, uh, and other models uh, are part of the violation. So you can have uh, uh, heavy charged particles that uh, may, may decay in the detector or may go through the detector, so leave uh, uh, tracks, which are even stopping tracks or just uh, starting at some point in the detector. I will show this in a moment. Okay, so you see this in this plot. Uh, so there are all kinds of possible uh, signature, displays jets, lepton jets, displays leptons, and so on with the signatures of tracks uh, stopping or starting at some point in the detector, depending, of course, on what kind of signal, signature you're looking at. And uh, so these, these kind of particles are actually, there is a you know, large program of research at the LSC to look for this kind of particle because they could indeed give uh, a signal of supersymmetry. Uh, maybe non-conventional supersymmetry, but still. And uh, so there, this is uh, a, a synoptic view of the results of the search for these long-lived particles, long-living particles from uh, from Atlas. So the, what is excluded is the region below uh, below the, the the curves. Okay. So this is the, the um, um, sorry. This is the the mass limit as function of the lifetime of the particles. So you can see that, okay, limits up to uh, one, yes, uh, 1.5 TV are even, yes, 1.5 TV are, are, are given, but of course they depend on the, on the lifetime of the particles, so they go down to even like uh, 400 GV or so. So here also there is still room for, uh, for improvement and for searches. Okay, another uh, search beyond the MSSM that has been done uh, because this model was uh, 
relatively recently coming out, so it tells Susie, okay, what does it give? Uh, this is not picked up by standard or conventional missing energy searches because uh, it gives very little missing energy. And so you look in general for relatively soft jets, but a lot of them, so that's the idea. Soft jets is difficult, but since you have a lot of them, you can, uh, you can of course, uh, use them uh, for uh, discriminating uh, from standard model. So this is, in fact, what you have is uh, this ST variable, which is the sum of all the objects in the events. If you have an event with a lot of objects, of course, the ST, which is the case in, uh, in supersymmetry, is uh, you expect the ST variable to be large. Okay, and here you see a signal, while for standard model in general peaks are very low values. And these are, uh, okay, the excluded regions uh, from, uh, uh, from the data. So again, up to about uh, one TV uh, uh, mass of the squark is set. And this, okay, depends uh, as usual on the, uh, on the detailed parameters of the model. Okay, so uh, finally, uh, this is uh, the grand uh, summary for, uh, for ATLAS. Here yeah, there are all the references and the limits. So limits in the 1 TV range, of course, are, uh, are um, as I've, I've shown you, uh, are given, but also there are much lower limits and there are uncovered regions that uh, need to be covered. And the same thing for, for CMS. Okay, so now I go on to the searches for dark matter. So uh, this is, uh, probably you all know this, I mean, we are not in competition with the experiment to look for dark matter, for the cosm cosmic dark matter. What we are trying to do is to uh, uh, eventually create the dark matter candidate particles in the collision and then analyze the blob here, what happens be, yeah, what, what is the interaction between uh, the standard model particles, what we have in the, in the collision, the LSE, and uh, the, the dark matter? Of course, once you can analyze, if we could analyze that, this would be very beneficial also for uh, uh, all the other experiments which are looking for detecting directly or indirectly dark matter in the cosmos. Okay, so this said, uh, what do we do? Uh, so first of all, let me show this plot. What kind of particles, dark matter particles are we looking for? This is the, uh, the dark matter particles in here. So the WIMP and of course the neutralino, so SUSY, the SUSY-like dark matter particles. There are a lot of other possibilities, some of which have also been discussed previously in this, uh, in this symposium, uh, but that's, Okay, that's what we focus on at the LSC for now. Okay, so how do we look for dark matter candidates at the LSC? So dark matter, by definition, is the weakly interacting mass particle. They leave missing energy. They are not visible. So how do we, leave, how, how do we get them? Is by uh, tagging. So they are producing these kind of processes, and they just produce nothing. So you wouldn't see nothing in the detector. What you do is to try to tag a, a initial state radiation gluon, okay? So you say there is initial state radiation gluon, so there is a, a, a collision happen, and then there is lots of missing energy. And typically what you do is to look for, so monojets, monophotons, monotop, mono, mono everything, okay? Single, single objects, okay? The other thing was already discussed by Massimo, so is the X portal model, so which, uh, where you create the AX, and the X can, uh, can decay into, into WIMPs, into dark matter par particle candidates. And uh, so again, there are possibilities to see this, but this I will go faster because Massimo has already reviewed this. And then there are so-called uh, two, uh, two of, or DIGET, in fact, it's more than DIGET, it's CT bar and BB bar uh, final states, okay, that are also looked at. Okay, so two words on interpretations, because as I said, we don't know what is the, the interaction between the standard model dark particle, uh, standard model particle and the dark matter. So there are two, uh, let's say, for the moment, okay, there, for the moment there are two, uh, uh, let's say, 
two approaches. One is used uh, at the LHC for interpretation of the data. One is uh, so-called effective field theory, okay? So where you don't, uh, you don't make any assumption of what goes on in this blob. Typically, even if there is a messenger particle or a mediator particle, it's very high mass, so you can forget, you can sort of neglect its uh, detail, detailed interaction in, uh, in uh, yes, in calculating cross-section branching ratios. So uh, you just make assumption on, uh, on some potential that uh, takes on in the interaction, okay? So there is, in other words, here there is no, no mediator mass involved. In the other case, uh, you can assume that instead that, they, you know, there is a mediator mass, could, for example, even be a Z prime or other uh, heavy mass, that this somewhat uh, could be created, or even if it's not created, uh, is, um, is virtually, you know, in the, in the interaction. And here you can, you have uh, models that, of course, have a dependency on the mass of the mediator, okay? So this, they, they give uh, slightly, in fact, sometimes more than slightly different, uh, different results. So even here, there are a lot of published results. I put all the references that you can see in the slides. So you can see that all kinds of searches that I mentioned are covered. And, uh, and others, uh, yes, so many, many searches have been covered. So I show here a um, uh, very, very small selection of these searches. So one is the monojet search that I discussed, uh, okay, I discussed before. So here the key is, of course, uh, missing energy. Again, uh, miss, missing energy spectrum measured, uh, missing energy distribution measured by, by CMS, uh, very good control up to very high, en uh, high, high transverse energy. So, and these are the kind of plots uh, and um, result and interpretation that you can get uh, from, from this search. So the monojet is one of the most sensitive, and that's also why I show it. So anyway, you can see here is the, the um, uh, upper limit on the cross-section of the dark matter with the standard model particle interaction set by CMS, okay? And compared to limits by uh, direct uh, search experiments, okay? So you can see that uh, they are quite comparable the limit from, from LHC are quite comparable, and actually, as already was shown uh, for the Higgs portal uh, models, uh, they, they kind of cover up the low mass, uh, the low mass region, okay? So this is interesting. Of course, it has to be verified if uh, we are really comparing the right things. But okay, there is uh, certainly interest in, in, in doing this kind of plots. Uh, so this is for uh, two types of assumptions, so uh, spin independent and spin dependent. Okay, and uh, there are various other assumptions on the type of interaction which are consistent with what used by the direct, uh, direct search experiment. Uh, okay, so here uh, I want to show this uh, because I, uh, Thing is interesting. So this is the other approach using uh, simplified the model with the mediator particle. Huh? Could be a Z prime, could be other things. I had the plot with the Z prime, so could the plot with a Z prime, but could be any other particle. And uh, so here you have uh, uh, limits. Uh, so always from the experimental results that I've shown before, you can set the limits on the coupling as function of uh, the mediator mass. And what is excluded is the region under the curves. Okay, uh, yes. So here the invisible, go very fast, invisible Higgs search was already reviewed by Massimo. So again, uh, this feature that uh, the LHC searches can cover down to, to low mass. So if this is cons confirmed, I think it has an impact also on the direct searches. And uh, finally, uh, so the LHC prospect. So this uh, just show here is the LHC uh, long-term uh, uh, plan from 2015 to 2035 for the next 20 years. 
So uh, there are, you can see the different uh, uh, long shutdown, okay? So we are here now in, the, in 2015, okay? The run will go on for three years. About 100 invest femtobarn are expected to be uh, collected. Then for the next run, where also the energy should be up to 14 TV, from 13 to 14 TV, there should be collected 300 invest femtobarn. And finally, at the high room LHC, there will be 3,000 invest femtobarn collected. Okay, so I give, um, I give predictions just for the next run. Okay, there are a lot of uh, papers on also prediction of the Ilumi LHC. Anyway, for the next run, this is the Gluino early run uh, to discovery. So this is just up to 10 inverse femtobarn. So it will be very, very soon. Huh? Uh, so, and this, uh, this uh, show the, the significance, okay, the significance as function of the mass of the Gluino. So what you can see is that, okay, for, uh, for certain masses which are not excluded already with uh, 10 inverse femtobarn, you will have sigma at the four sigma level. So if CMS has also four sigma, this is clearly already quite a discovery. And then of course you can accumulate more luminosity as we have seen 100 inverse femtobarn and much more significant uh, uh, signal can be, um, can be detected. Um, so this is a, a larger view, okay? So this is a um, mass reach of uh, SUSE searches in RAN2 and uh, high luminosity. So shown here uh, in light blue is uh, RAN2 and uh, the high luminosity is the dark blue. So you can see that you can explore up to certainly the 2.5 TP uh, mass scale with uh, already a, a RAN with the uh, yes, so get ready with run three and uh, for sure with the, with the iLuminosity. Okay, so I go to the conclusion. Um, to the summary, rather. The, so the CMS and Dallas collaboration, as you have seen, are covering a vast spectrum of uh, possible uh, SUSI and dark matter signatures. So far, there is no significant deviation from the standard model observed. So there are a few upward fluctuation in a two, three sigma uh, effect in dilepton mass edge searches, which I have described with, uh, so they certainly are worth uh, watching, continue to watch uh, what happens with the next data. So uh, I've shown that to you that the stringent limits on many SUSI scenarios and dark matter candidates have been set. But what is probably more important is that there are lots of holes, uh, lots of gaps uh, in, in the searches we are doing. And we are doing a great effort to, to fill up and to look at also in the, in the regions where the search is more difficult. I've shown you some examples for, for the stop. Okay, um, so uh, indeed, uh, there, there is also need uh, maybe for, for new techniques, and some of them are being developed. They are called, for example, understanding, reconstructing the particles, uh, reconstructing the top, reconstructing a W, reconstructing a Z, rather than looking for leptons and, uh, uh, say, jet in the, the traditional way. So in this has been shown that can be done, and that uh, will certainly bring new, new power to the search. So on June 3rd, 2015, the LFC has uh, restart collision 13 TV, and the run two uh, LFC run two is ongoing. Uh, so with the increased energy and luminosity of run two, Luinos up to about two TV uh, are within reach. Many other discoveries are uh, possible. I mean, as you, you have uh, probably seen, uh, but of course, uh, okay if uh, nature is graceful to us and gives us a new, 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 new physics in this, in this mass range. So after the Higgs discovery, which is of course a great thing and a great uh, progress, uh, we have a great responsibility to use, I mean, this, uh, the detector and, and the, the, the machine, the LHC machine, which works really uh, fantastically well, uh, to really cover up every, not to miss anything, to cover up every single piece of 
parameter space or model that is up there and uh, to make sure that we are not missing anything. So uh, if there is new physics, we really have uh, you know, the responsibility to find it. And uh, just uh, to finish with the cartoon, so uh, okay, it's a responsibility, I would say, for the whole uh, HEP community. So everybody can help, uh, theorists, experimentalists. So indeed, you can help to uh, leave no stone uh, unturned. How? By, for example, developing models and also methods, uh, analytical methods, that can uh, make the search really bulletproof. So we are sure not to miss anything. If there is something, we will find. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think we have time for a few questions. Ah, Gustavo. Uh, speaking of not leaving uh, any uh, stone unturned, so in the long-lived searches, you show that uh, you have several uh, ways. You, you have uh, disappearing uh, charge tracks, appearing tracks. Um, but uh, what about charge tracks that then will decay to, say, jets? Are those events susvido or...? or no, no, there are, there are uh, searches for displaced jets. I mean, uh, there are, there are, I mean, I don't know if that's... Charge, charge, yes. tracks, then exactly. decay. Exactly, yes, yes, yes. I couldn't, I mean, also in the plot that I've shown, there is a region which is covered by this specific search. I mean... Right, thank you. Other questions? Uh, so this excess um, on the Z-peak of the dilepton, how fast could it be clarified or uh, that it's not there or that something is there in, the, in this neuron? Uh, in, so if you, uh, if you assume it's a signal and you sort to of evaluate a cross-section of this, uh, I mean, within the next, uh, say, 13 inverse femtobarn, it could be... Either it shows up to the five sigma, so then also atlas. I mean, the, as you've seen, the CMS sees something that atlas doesn't see and vice versa. So then uh, also the other experiment should see it. If not, it will be, I mean, it will go away. I mean, for the moment, it's not cold signal, it's just uh, fluctuation. So within the run two, will certainly be settled. Okay, so we had a very lively session, so we thank uh, the speaker again, all the speakers, yeah.